Hello there, I'm playing with Chunk again. Although this time Chunk is probably not the right word because I refuse to call this beautiful airplane here a piece of Chunk. This is a super constellation built in the year 1955 and um, there are only two of them in the entire world that actually fly with passengers. All the others are either in a, in a museum or on static display or just fly for air shows with no passengers. And the only two are here in Switzerland and the other one is in uh, uh, Australia on the other side of the world. And what I have today is a piece of this aircraft. It's true, it's from exactly the Swiss Super Coney. And it looks like this one. A big black box with a little window and a couple of fuses. And this black box is located on the right side uh, next to the co-pilot seat on the bottom or on the floor better um, it's a propeller synchronizer box now what you see here is what's inside this box uh, I only have the, the, the parts here because I needed the box for another project my Super Coney simulator and there I needed only the empty box but not the parts inside. These parts here will probably be used as spare parts again. Depending on the conditions they are not in very very good conditions but also not too bad. Uh, we have a little bit of corrosion here you can see all this white gunk here that's from moisture uh, that's the cable uh, tree inside with the connector for this individual modules here now before I start I should explain what a propeller synchronizer box does uh, when you look at the airplane you see it, it has four uh, engines with huge propellers um, these propellers normally during flight uh, turn with the same speed more or less uh, the problem is just for flying the airplane it's not necessary to synchronize the speeds it doesn't matter if one engine is a little bit uh, faster or slower than the other but uh, this box is uh, simply for convenient for the convenience of the passengers because if you only have one engine there is no problem but if you have more than one engine two three four engines and they are not exactly at the same speed you get a very annoying sound inside the cabin so instead of a constant mm, you get something like wow wow so you get the idea this is called a propeller beat or a propeller drumming so you can actually hear the rotational speed difference of the of the individual engines and on a long flight this gets very annoying makes you tired gives you headaches so this is in fact only for passion passenger comfort now what they do is they measure the speeds of the four engines and they take engine number one as the master engine and they compare the other three engines with engine number one and that's the reason why we have these three 
differential synchros here. So let's have a look on the schematic diagram. We have uh, on the left side propeller synchronizer generator one, two, three, four. Each one for uh, each for one engine. Um, these are connected to a relay, a big relay box. That's this part here. Or some of those relays here. Then we see uh, also on the left side, a little bit more to the center, differential motors. That's the three motors here. Uh, they are compared. Oh, they compare the speeds of engine one or engine two in case engine one uh, does fail. There's a switch where you can select engine one or two as the master engine. Well, um, before I go into details, I will show you how synchros are working. What is a synchro? A synchro looks perhaps like this or probably like that or maybe it's a little bit bigger or smaller but it's in fact a rotating transformer it has a rotor which has a coil or oh, one winding inside and then for example we have three coils on the outside each one 120 degrees apart from each other <coughs> this one can rotate the others are fixed to the case Uh, what happens if you feed, for example, a 400 Hertz AC current through that coil? Depending on the position of the rotating coil, uh, for example, this coil here will now pick up a maximum. This coil here will pick up something in between and this one too and for example if the coil stands in this position here we get nothing here we get a little bit here and a little bit here so that means the output of these three coils depend on the rotary position of this uh, rotor coil and well I show you how this looks on the oscilloscope I'm sorry that I only have a two channel uh, oscilloscope so we see phase one and two or I don't know two and three and the third phase you have to think yourself you see one phase goes up and down from maximum to zero and the other phase does the same but 120 degree apart from the first and then the third would do exactly the same but another 120 degree apart. And what you also can see is that if you look at the second channel here, the phase is changing. So we have the maximum here and now we have the minimum here. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to see because of the, uh, of the triggering. I uh, set the trigger to channel 1. So we should see now channel 2 changing the phase, 
going to maximum, going back to zero, changing the phase and coming back to maximum. And that's exactly what all the drew phases make. Of course this alone is not very interesting. It gets interesting if we have a second one. The same principle, the same rotor, connecting the 400 Hz supply together. So when I connect this phase with that phase, this one with this one, and that one with that one, if I turn this around, this will exactly follow with the same speed and the same angle as what this one does. And that's something I can show you in a model. Here we have a normal synchro. This is a differential synchro, which I will explain later. And this is another normal synchro. The two are connected together, or in fact all three. So I'm holding this one so that it doesn't move. And you can see, if I move one, the other follows. Or I can also move this one and the other will follow exactly in the same way. So that's how rotary signals or rotation positions are transmitted in an old aircraft. And I think in a newer aircraft it's still the same. Now the differential synchro here is a little bit different. On the differential synchro we still have three coils on the stator on the outside that are not moving. This is the rotor on the inside which moves around and this does also have three windings which are fed to uh, slip contacts to the outside so we have in fact rotor 1, rotor 2 and rotor 3 and stator 1, stator 2 and stator 3 so this synchro has 6 um, connections and what it does is we connect rotor 1, 2 and 3 to one of our synchros here 1, 2, 3 and the stator goes to the other synchro 1, 2, uh, 3 and this one now only turns if these two uh, normal synchros here are turning in different directions or at different speeds. So if they are turning in the same direction with the same speed, nothing happens here because the three fields here and here are turning in the same direction and creating no mechanical force. So I will show you that on the model. So if I turn those in the same direction with the same speed, oops, it's a little bit difficult to do that by hand, but you see this is always pointing down, it's not moving or not much or only because I'm not doing this perfectly. But if only one turns, the differential uh, synchro will turn too. And if the other turns, 
it turns too. And if both turns in opposite direction, the differential synchro turns at twice the speed or speed of 1 and 2 combined. We, can, we could also uh, use this for simple calculations. So if I move this one quarter and I, if I move this one quarter to the other side, this one turns half a revolution. So we can add the angles here uh, on the differential synchro. Now this is exactly what happens in the propeller synchronizer box. We have two engines that are compared with one differential synchro. When the two engines have the same speed, nothing happens here. If one is a little bit slower than the other, I try to create that, you will see that the differential synchro moves uh, at the difference of the two revolution speeds. And that's exactly what the differential synchros in this prop synchronizer box are doing. So if the other one turns faster, the differential goes clockwise. And if this one goes faster, it goes counterclockwise. If both are the same speed, no change in the position of the differential synchro. And for all those who are wondering uh, how I get the 400 Hz power supply, this is my power supply. It's an old uh, car hi-fi amplifier with a 12 volt power supply. And the 400 Hz come from my function get generator here. 400 Hz, I tuned the amplitude to get an output here of about 25 volts. This is this is about the right voltage for these uh, synchros. And here you can see that's the rotor uh, connection. Only two wires go to the left and to the right synchro. And the output, all the three phases, go to the differential synchro here and from the other side too, as I drawn it in the schematic diagram. So I hope this was understandable. So here we have the three differential synchros or synchro motors. They drive some switches that can be seen here. There are three switches on each motor. If I turn that, you can see how these switches toggle from 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. It's the same on this and on this uh, motor here. There's also a wheel here that uh, limits the, the, the adjustment of the propeller to 3%. If you need more, you have to push a button. This relay here will energize and the wheel here will reset to zero. And then you have another 3% to move until it hits the mechanical limit and you resynchronize it again. Of course, you can also adjust this by hand. So the hand adjustment will be the course adjustment, and this is more for the fine tuning and the automatic 
readjustment during the entire flight. Now about the switches here. We have here a little motor with gears and the same switches. We have one, two, three, four sets of three switches and I will show you how that works and I will tell you what this is good for. By the way, you can see here November 25, 1952. So that's state of the art of the 1950s. Okay, I'm running this extra slow so you can see this is one set of switches, this is the other one, and they always open and close in a sequence one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And there are two contacts, one on the upper side and one on the back side here. And what this entire AC here is, is in fact a mechanical stepper motor driver. Yeah, that's a stepper motor driver as you have done it in the 1950s, because electronics in the 1950s that consists of vacuum tubes and they are only used for radios, radar and all that stuff. But for the mechanical parts, engines, it's all like switches, electric motors and all that stuff. So if we switch back to the schematic, you can see the switches. They are located on the top. They, all, they have drawn the motor, you can see the switch motor on the top, on the right side. Then we have one set of switches and two sets are not drawn in detail. And then the fourth. And they go directly via a, a relay to the governor heads. And the governor heads are located on the, on the engines. <coughs> the governor is the, the regulator for the propeller uh, blade angle. And changing the propeller blade angle, in fact, changes the speed of the engine. For some reasons I have this very well polished uh, propeller blade here in my living room. I polished it myself. It came from a junkyard. Playing with junk again. And uh, why do you have to uh, rotate these propeller blades? Well, if you fly slow or if you're just starting at takeoff you will have about this angle, so this will be the rotation of the blade. Then as you fly faster, you will turn the blade a little bit like that. And if you are at cruise speed, you will turn it probably like that. And just in case your engine fails and stops turning, you will turn it like that into the flight direction to reduce drag and to prevent the failed engine from windmilling because you have a big uh, propeller in a, in, a, in a fast airstream so it will be driven by this airstream and break the engine e even more or could probably uh, rip the engine from the airplane and you also can turn it that way in reverse uh, position that's when you are landing you have to break the airplane down to zero so this will help you slow down now uh, the problem is you cannot uh, regulate the speed of the engines just by 
uh, open and closing the, tr the throttle. Um, that would not be uh, accurate enough. So you set the throttle to a certain manifold pressure, to a certain amount of uh, horsepower if you want. Uh, and then you adjust the blades uh, to create more or less thrust uh, and that will speed up or slow down your engine because it has to move more air or less air. And with this method you can fine-tune the speed of the engine during the flight. By the way, this is a propeller blade that was used on a DC-4 and uh, a lot of other different airplanes of that era. Okay, let's have a look at the parts here again. So, this is the stepper motor driver that drives all four stepper motors for each propeller governor. In the same time. This is for a global setup so you have one lever in the cockpit where you set the speed that you need, uh, the rotational speed of the engines that you need for takeoff, for climb, for cruise flight. Then we have another switch bank here. It's only one switch which is selected by this lever here. Uh, this is used for uh, a manual adjustment of each individual uh, propeller. That switch goes to the relay box, which directs the signals from this switch to the, uh, to the engine you want to adjust. And then we have the differential synchros here that will do the job automatically if everything is set up and you push the uh, synchronize button they will simply turn if it's necessary to adjust the engine speeds by adjusting the propeller blades as I explained before uh, as I said, number one engine is master, two, three and four will follow the master engine. Um, the stepper motors are driven by these switches here, one, two, three, one, two, three, it steps uh, uh, when it uh, has the, com the sequence here completed, one, two, three, the stepper motor will have one turn, we go one turn around or maybe only a quarter of a turn, I don't know how much travel they do per sequence. This will tell the propeller governor to move the propeller blades a little bit because the governor itself is made to maintain a, a selected speed so if the speed changes because the engine gets a little bit more gas or the air gets thinner or thicker the governor will change the propeller blade by itself to maintain a constant speed but here with this adjustment switches and the adjustment stepper motor on the governor um, you can change that setting a little bit to match so that all four engines are at the end on the same speed. Well, the relay uh, box here or the relay module here, it's not so exciting from the electric point of view. It's just one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten relays on this side and about the same number on that side with a lot of cables and wires. Maybe it's worth to have a look 
uh, a close-up look on this because it is very beautifully made you see this is all hand uh, uh, bound by hand knots made by fingers from workers everything every screw here is not done by some machine not from any robot it's just a lot of work and it of course has to be tested by hand by someone also here everything is tied together junction block three switches the limiter solenoids or well we could call them relays that hook into this wheel here and they release it to allow another turn then there is the motor that drives four banks of switches simultaneously you can see it here it has a, a warm gear here in the center and two small gears left and right that drive the switches on either side with a big connector and that's the block for the manual setting of the of the propellers yeah that's the propeller synchronizer box of a super constellation built in the year 1955 thanks for watching